Okay, my friend, I've just stopped you uh, in Kilburn High Road. This is North London, and you said to me you don't follow any religion. Yeah, but you believe in God. I do. Right. Uh, sorry, what's your name, my friend? Paul. 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 Okay, Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, do you know why you believe there is a God? Yeah, I do believe. Do you know why God made us? Not really. No. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, Paul. To answer this question, Paul, you know you're not following any religion. You say. No. Brilliant, okay. Are you Caribbean background? Is that right? Caribbean, yes. yes. Brilliant. Okay, Paul. Now, to answer this question, Paul, Almighty God, we believe, has sent many messengers. Okay. Abraham, Moses, Noah, David, Solomon, Joseph, Jacob, Jesus, and finally Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon all the prophets of Almighty God. Okay. All of these messengers came with a message for us, Paul, of good news and a warning. Okay. The good news for us, Paul, is that there is a God. He's absolutely all-powerful, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the all-merciful, the all-powerful. Right, Paul? This creator, he's not a man, he's not a woman, there is nothing whatsoever like him. This creator has made us and has put us on the earth and to tell us what that purpose is, the purpose of our lives, he has sent these prophets and messengers. Story makes sense? Yeah, so far. Yeah. Okay, so far makes sense, right. What did they say? They came with good news, the Quran says, and they came with a warning. The good news for us is, number one, there is a God. Two, that if we worship this God alone, without ascribing partners to Him, without worshipping anything else, right, um, then uh, we worship Him alone and we follow the Messenger, peace be upon Him, you know, if we were alive at the time of Jesus, we follow Jesus, at the time of Moses, we follow Moses, Today we need to follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, peace be upon him. Then our life is going to be happy on this earth, but more importantly, we're going to have salvation and we're going to end up in paradise. That's what they said. And this life on this earth, Paul, is partly a test. And secondly, not only a test, but secondly, we're on this earth to become purer through worshipping God and doing good things until in the hereafter we can see God we will be able to see Allah okay that's what they said sounds good sounds real good this I got to see <laughs> okay well, okay now to get there you need to acknowledge there's one God which you do anyway yeah yeah you do you acknowledge God in the way that I've just said that he's the almighty the all-powerful the all-seeing he's not a man he's not a woman it's more a spirit we don't use the word spirit, but yes, it's something we can't imagine. Okay. 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 Do you, uh, Paul? Can I ask? Do you accept Muhammad as a messenger of God? Peace be upon him. Um, I I can't answer that because I don't know much about Muhammad. That's fine. Okay. I don't know much about most of the prophets. It's just what I actually see, or you know, people normally tell me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can we just uh, just very quickly discuss Christianity? Christianity says that Jesus is God. Did you realize that? Because Christianity says God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and you don't believe in that? I don't believe, no, I don't believe he, he is God. Okay, fine. Okay, so you don't believe in Christianity. <laughs> no, no, now, I don't believe Jesus is God. That's right. You don't believe that Jesus is God. No. Therefore, you don't believe in the teachings of Christianity. No, not really. Okay, no. right. Now, do you know all the other religions like Buddhism and Hindu religion, etc.? Huh. They all are really doing idolatry. Yeah. They've got idols. They worship idols. Yeah, statues. Okay, yeah. statues. Yeah. So you'd agree that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> so if you are following a religion, the only one you may follow is Islam. Uh, well, I need to know more about more about the actual right, itself. right. Okay. Now, the story, as I've said, Paul, sort of makes sense. Yeah. Now, what is the? Do you know what the proof of Islam is? What is the proof that the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which means peace be upon him, is a true prophet of God? What is the proof that Islam is true? And what is the proof that there is a God? Do you know what the proof is? No, no. I can't say that. Okay. The proof, Paul. You see. Almighty God has sent the prophets with miracles to show they were special people. Uh, for example, Jesus, for example, Moses parted the sea and the children of Israel went through. He threw down his stick and he became a snake for the Pharaoh to see and the people to see. Yeah? Now, at the time of Jesus, Jesus brought the dead back to life with God's power. Jesus cured the leper with God's power and Jesus cured the blind with God's power. Paul, yep, you know about that yeah, yeah. from Christianity, right? But it just shows that he's not God, but he's somebody sent by God, which is what Islam says, 
Right. After Jesus, peace be upon him, God sent another prophet, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means peace and salutations of Allah, God be upon him. Now, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was given a miracle, which is, I would say, greater, scholars say, greater, or certainly as great as the miracles given to Jesus, peace be upon him. Do you know what that miracle was? No. Okay. This miracle, which is available for us to see today, Paul, is a book, the Quran. The Quran is the proof of Islam and the proof of God existing and the proof that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a true prophet of Almighty God. The Quran is a proof, Paul, for a number of reasons. For example, things we can see and logical. And, this, and these are written on this leaflet here. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. If you hold them. If you hold that leaflet. Thank you. Firstly, it's got many scientific facts in it. The Quran describes embryology in detail. Do you know what embryology is? It's how an embryo forms inside the womb of its mother. How a baby forms inside the womb of its mother. It's described in detail. Okay. Professor of embryology, Professor Keith Moore, when he heard of this, when he read it, he's a professor in a Canadian university, he said, this shows that this book could not have come from other than God. Okay. The Big Bang Theory? You've heard of that? Okay. And that, that is now really accepted as fact that the universe was one lump. Then God split, or not, not science doesn't say God split apart, but science says that it split apart and formed the universe. This is something mentioned in detail in the Quran. Now, if this book was recent, it wouldn't be amazing. But this book, Paul, is 1400 years old. A long time. A long, long time. This book was given to a man who couldn't read or write. Even if he could read and write, Paul, he couldn't have produced a book like it. Right? However, the fact that he couldn't read or write adds even more weight to it. Okay. Now, let's continue. The book has remained the same for 1400 years. No one has been able to produce a chapter like it, even though God in the Quran challenges us to try. God says in the Quran, Paul, that if the whole of mankind and the spirit world, jinn kind, got together, they couldn't produce one book like it. On another occasion, God says they couldn't even produce one chapter like it. And the shortest chapter, chapters are called surahs, the shortest chapter is three sentences. So no one has been able to produce three sentences which match the style, the eloquence, the language, the powerful nature of the Quran. And this challenge, Paul, has stood for 1,400 years. It's a long time. Now, right, the book was revealed not as one book. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, peace be upon him, didn't come to the people and say, this is from God, this is a book. It came to him as, and started, the revelation started at the age of 40. And when he was 40 years of age, the revelation started by the Holy Spirit, which is a title of the angel Gabriel, coming to him while he was meditating upon God. And brought him the words, he would remember the words and he would Pass tell people. I just see you from across the rock. I want to catch a couple of shop before they close six right. o'clock. Yeah? All right, we'll catch up, we'll catch up. So these words were brought to him, sent by Almighty God, as Jesus had predicted. In the Bible, Paul, Jesus said, or Jesus still said, I mean, it says it in the Bible today, that Jesus says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Now, the spirit of truth will come and it will bring the words of what it refers to in the Bible as the Father, which means God. So Jesus talked about this and we believe this is the coming of the Holy Spirit or the angel Gabriel with the words of God to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, peace be upon him, for mankind. Okay. Now, this book isn't followed by a few crazy people. Okay. Today, it's followed by 1.7 billion people. It's a big religion. Okay. And it's the fastest growing religion in the world today. You can look it up on the internet and you'll see the fastest growing religion is Islam. Okay. Now, Islam is growing fast. Okay. Islam is very, very big. And you can see famous people becoming Muslims. Mike Tyson became Muslim. Michael Jackson yeah. became a Muslim. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Ali the boxer. Yeah. Chris Eubanks. Yeah. 
a Ronnie O'Sullivan snooker player, world champion, become Muslim. Many people become Muslims. Now, if money and fame was enough for them to be happy, they wouldn't need to become Muslim. So why they become Muslims? It's a good one. That's okay. A good one. Right, okay, right. <laughs> so why they become Muslims? These famous people have become Muslims, okay? And this shows you there's something in it. Right. Now, what is Islam saying? Islam is saying it's the message is simple. Believe in one God, which you do. Accept Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, as a messenger of God, and you've got salvation. You go to heaven. You know what's going to happen in heaven? The Quran describes in detail beautiful women, rivers of milk and honey and wine, palaces to live in, where the bricks will be made of gold, and uh, the mortar between the bricks will be musk, perfume. Can you imagine that? That's that's the that's place. Right. That's the sight worth seeing. That's right, my friend. That's the sight worth seeing, and it's easy to go there. Accept you accept one God already. Yes. Just accept Muhammad as a messenger of God. You've seen people around you, Muslims. Yeah. You know Muslims are good people. Yeah, I got cousins who are Muslims. Okay, and they're good people. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And have they become? Have you got any cousins who've become Muslim? Um, four of them. Okay. And after become Muslims, are they better or worse people? Better. A lot, a lot better. A lot better. <laughs> and they're happy? Very happy. <laughs> very happy. So why don't you say the words and be a Muslim? It's very simple. These are the words, my friend. I bear witness there is nothing worthy of worship except Almighty God. I, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant and messenger. That's all you need to say. If you say that, my friend, you're a Muslim. You are guaranteed to go into paradise. That's it. After saying these words, can you do what you like? No, obviously you can't. You've got to do good things as much as you can. Yeah. But you don't need to do everything. Say the words, right my friend? Then I will give you a book on how to pray and you start praying. You pray already my friend? Um, Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Not really. Okay, but you need to start praying. Everything else, don't worry about at this stage. You might think, I've got to do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, whatever. Don't worry. Once you start praying, once you've said the words and start praying, my friend, then you'll see your life changes and you will want to do more and more, inshallah. And Allah, who is the all powerful, the Almighty, you see, God is absolutely all powerful, right? It says in the Quran, a leaf on a tree doesn't move except He knows it. He knows the conversation between all His creatures. For example, these pigeons that are flying around here, He knows what they're speaking to each other. At the same time, every single human being, what they're saying to each other, he knows. He knows what you're thinking in your heart. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows absolutely everything. Isn't that amazing? And, right? And the thing is, Paul, once you've said these words, you have a connection with Allah. And Allah is not a different God. It's the God that Jesus prayed to. It's the God that Moses prayed to. It's the God that Abraham prayed to. And Christianity has made Jesus into God. You see? So you can see that. Did you know what religion Jesus was? He, he was a... Hold on, he was Jewish. He was Jewish by race. His race was Jewish. But what was his religion? Um, I don't actually know. Okay. The word Islam means submission. A Muslim, Paul, is a submitter to the will of God. And Jesus says, I submit my will to the will of the Father. So he submitted himself to God. Father is the term used in the Bible for God. So he says, I submit my will to the will of the Father, which means he's saying, I submit my will to the will of God. And if you translate that into Arabic, he's saying, I am a Muslim to the Father, which means I'm a Muslim to God. Makes sense? Yes. Now, also, not just the words, also if you look at his life, for example, Jesus prays in the Bible by putting his head on the ground. Who prays like that today? Muslims. Muslim, yes. You've seen Muslim praying? Bow, no, not bowing only. Paul, putting their head on the ground. Yeah, I've seen that in there. On the on on TV in the like, synagogues or the, in the, the churches. Mosques. 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 Yes, mosques. They're called mosques. mosques. Yeah, the Muslim synagogues and Muslim churches are called mosques. Yep. You've seen that? Yes. Right. Now, also, Jesus never ate pork and Jesus ate kosher food, which is the same as halal food. Uh, it says in the Bible, for example, that Jesus was circumcised. It says, um, we know from history that Jesus had a beard. Yes? Now, we know from history, paintings, etc., that Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the women around Jesus used to cover their hair. 
right? Now, if you saw Mary today walking down the street here in North London with her head covered and her loose clothes on, what religion would you think she was? Muslim. <laughs> see? Yeah. If you saw Jesus walking down the street with his loose clothes on and long beard, what religion would you think it was? Muslim. <laughs> Muslim. Can you see that? Yeah. It's a religion of Islam. People, people up here with the same, wearing the same yes. thing.